Welcome back to Uncensored. Donald Trump last night became the first Republican presidential candidate to win open races in both Iowa and New Hampshire, a feat only accomplished before by a setting president. He got 55% of the vote in New Hampshire, making a presidential rematch between Trump and Biden, looking now all but certain. Nikki Haley, Trump's only remaining rival for the GOP nomination, pledged to fight on, though, telling her supporters there are dozens of states left to go. And there are, but there will be increasing pressure if Trump keeps winning for her to pull out too. President Biden, meanwhile, on the New Hampshire Democrat primary as a writing candidate, little known challenger Dean Phillips, managed a very creditable 20%, a measure perhaps of the president's deep unpopularity. His approval ratings are currently at 33%, and no incumbent president has ever been re-elected with approval numbers that low. Well, I'm joined now by Laura Trump, a senior advisor to Donald Trump's presidential campaign, well, and his daughter-in-law, it must be said, and by the political commentator, Benny Johnson, well, welcome to both of you. Um, Lara, great to have you on Uncensored. Thank um, you. you. You're a great singer. I happen to know this from my, oh. my knowledge of your family. <laughs> um, and you once recorded a cover of Tom Petty's song, I Won't Back Down. And I can't think of a more yes. appropriate song to describe your father-in-law, who looked dead and buried politically 18 months ago and is now right back where he wants to be, uh, in fact, winning in a way he didn't do when he first got elected president in 2016 with Iowa and New Hampshire. How has he done yeah, this? I, he's amazing. I mean, Piers, you know, he, this is this is a guy who really won't back down. And I think any other human being on this planet, quite frankly, with all that he has had against him, would have said enough. I mean, I think we, we can all pretty clearly see the goal of so much of what they've done to Donald Trump and whether they being the Department of Justice, obviously, that has been weaponized against him in so many respects, the mainstream media here in this country, his opponents in the swamp in Washington, D.C., man, they've leveled everything at him, and he's not backing down, he's not giving up, any normal person would, but I really do believe he understands what's at stake right now in this country and really for the rest of the world. Um, it is our job to be the leader of the free world, I think, in, in the United States, and we've always taken that very seriously. Right now, we are in a weakened state. We have a weak president. We have an economy that's not doing well. People across this country are suffering. They want Donald Trump back. I think he knows he's the only shot. And you know what? He's in it to win it. And and yeah, we've had a couple of great primaries uh, and caucuses, 2-0 and oh now. We're going to go on and uh, head to November 5th. You know, it, my phone went on Monday night. I was just about to come in to do the show, and it was Donald. And we hadn't spoken since our rather contentious interview we did actually launching this show uh, a while ago. But a very nice chat. And i got to say, he was exuding chilling confidence about what is happening. He really just believes he's going to win. Yeah, I, I, and I think he believes because the American people believe. I mean, you look at the way he's made history and the first two tests, really, of him as a candidate for president again. And it's it's not even fair to call him that. I mean, so many people kind of consider him an, an incumbent in so many ways, but he proved himself, Piers, in 2016 when the people of this country said, we want to give an outsider, a businessman, a shot. How will he do? It was amazing. He did things in four years in this country that most presidents wouldn't dream of doing in two full terms in office. Um, and so I think he is feeling confident. You saw he had a blowout win in Iowa. And then to go to New Hampshire, a state that if Nikki Haley had any shot at winning any state across this country in a primary race against Donald Trump, she would want to be in New Hampshire because that's where they have, of course, an open primary. People who are not affiliated with the yep. Republican Party can come vote. And you look at the win he had last night, it was really amazing. You, listen, to see. I remember so him saying to me good. once, I remember him saying to me once that he said, you gotta, you gotta win. He says, Muhammad Ali said, you know, if you're gonna uh, <laughs> talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk or the act right? doesn't play. Uh, Benny, let me bring you in. You've been waiting patiently here. Um, one of the great advantages that Donald Trump has is that in 2020, Joe Biden was able to run as the anti Trump after a very difficult year for the country with the pandemic, which wrecked all Trump's economic plans, as it did everywhere around the world. Um, this time, Biden has to run on his own record, and his approval rating says it all on almost every key policy initiative from immigration to the economy to crime, you name it, he's in the tank with the American people. Um, that has got to help Donald Trump, hasn't it, in a general election? Yeah, like, not good. Not a great strategy, actually, what Democrats have done. First off, could you imagine being a Joe Biden voter right now? Like, can you name a single accomplishment that you'd be particularly proud of? 
There's nothing less cool than being a Joe Biden voter, especially as a young person. And that is why you're seeing young people abandon Joe Biden. I'm looking at NBC News polling right now in front of me. The number one problem with Joe Biden's coalition, young people are abandoning Joe Biden. Donald Trump is winning with voters ages 18 to 34. 46% to 42%. When was the last time you saw that for a Democrat? But it gets even worse. Donald Trump is leading with Hispanics. And Joe Biden has collapsed in his support with black Americans down to 63%, a collapse of 25 points since taking office. Also, they have turned Donald Trump into a gangster. That also a big mistake. You've made an icon out of your political rival. You've given him a mugshot, as you can see here behind me in the studio. This is totally hardcore ratchet stuff that kids actually love that's become a meme online. And you've turned the man who was already an American icon into a bigger icon. Everybody likes voting for the political prisoner and you uh, done effed up. Democrat and you know what? Donald Trump is the only person I know where if he was actually convicted of any one of the things he's been uh, charged with and actually put yeah. into a prison cell, he's the only person I know that could probably still win the presidential election. Piers. Because the more they try and <laughs> throw this stuff at him, the more popular he gets. Piers, Chris Rock uh, had a comedy set that he did in Washington, D.C. with Nancy Pelosi in the audience. And Chris Rock said, you're going to turn Donald Trump into Tupac. He's going to sell more records. Yeah. You're stupid. And, well, Nancy Pelosi well, got you know up what? It's Will actually, Smith and slapped him in the face. It's actually very interesting you mentioned uh, Chris Rock, because I was at the New York Knicks in Manhattan the day after the 2016 election, and I found myself at the table sitting next to Chris Rock. And we got talking, and I said to him, why do you think Hillary Clinton lost? He went, let me tell you why, I said, because if someone's murdered eight people, don't go around telling everyone he's murdered nine. And the point he was making was, <laughs> if you wildly exaggerate everything with Trump, and let's be honest, I mean, even Lara would admit he's probably not the most angelic human being ever put onto God's <laughs> earth. I would um, never admit such a thing, Pierce, please. <laughs> but I don't think even he would admit that. You see that as a badge of dishonour. But the, you know, the reality is that this constant attempt to take him down, uh, culminating in the hypocrisy, in my view, of the Liberal side, led by senior Democrats up and down the country, saying, we've got to get rid of Trump and stop him running again to save democracy. And then they try and remove him from presidential state ballots, which, of course, is the most blatant example of trying to thwart democracy and allowing Americans to have a free vote imaginable. So there's a kind of nonsensical hypocrisy, but also, as you mentioned, uh, Benny, a stupidity. Which is it, it makes you, him hardcore. If you try and yeah. ki kill him off this way, and all it does is make him more popular, stop doing it. You know the definition well, of people, insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting yep, a different and result. And people identify with him, peers. People who feel like the system here has screwed them for their entire life. They look at that mugshot of Donald Trump. By the way, the Democrats thought that was it. That was going to be the nail in the coffin for him. That mugshot. That mugshot represents to so many people all across this country, hey, the same system that hasn't been working for me is working against him. And I understand it and I yes. see myself in that. They done messed up with yes. that one. Let How me much has he made from that mugshot? I heard he was merchandising it and making an absolute <laughs> fortune. It's all for the campaign. We should actually keep a tab. <laughs> I had Christmas wrapping paper with the mugshot on it. Yeah. You've turned him into a rebel, right? right? You've made him the sex pistols. You've turned him into the Ramones. He's now a rebel. And kids like voting for the rebel. But it's again, again, Benny, I would, I would again bring this back to, to Joe Biden. The great advantage Trump has is the condition of the, the sitting president. This is a clip of Biden yesterday trying to pronounce the name oh. of the country he represents. We'll teach Donald Trump a valuable lesson. Don't mess with the men in America unless you want to get the benefit. I think he was trying to say <laughs> United States of America, but he just he couldn't get it out. And we see endless clips of him falling over on stage, falling off bicycles, tripping down the steps of Air Force One and so on. He's up against Trump, a, a, a very old 81-year-old. Not because he's 81, because Mick Jagger's a few months younger and is as fit as a fiddle. It's just he looks like he's 181. And if you're Trump, you must be licking your lips that this guy's going to be your opponent. It would be bad Don't enough if, he, if it was if it was just that, by the way. But it's also that coupled with the fact 
that everything's a disaster around Joe Biden, right? I'm sorry to cut you off, Benny, but that's the truth, is you can lie to people and you can try and do the jazz hands that the Democrats do with the media all the time, only so long. But whenever it hits people's bottom line, when they know that their life is harder right now, in addition to seeing stuff like that, I mean, you're exactly right. Joe Biden is basically serving up the entire thing to us right now. I hope that uh, that there's no uh, funny business with 3 a.m. dumps this time around. That's no, all well, I'll and say. Benny, I mean, in the end, Trump, he's got some state going to choose a vice president pick. Who, if you were him, who's the smart play for Trump? The smart play is absolutely somebody who's young enough and energetic enough to carry forward the MAGA movement. Donald Trump will get constitutionally one term in office, so you have to pick someone who's not going to backstab you like a Mike Pence and somebody who's not going to betray you like a Nikki Haley. And so you should choose somebody like either Tucker Carlson or Vivek Ranswamy, who are true believers but are younger and who have this long stretch of a political career ahead of them so that you have a torch to pass when you are done with term one. Two. OK, Lara, what are your thoughts on VP pick? You probably know. Well, I, I, <laughs> well, I wouldn't, and I would never break any news here tonight. Of course, that's I not my I want you to break to news. If, if I did know. Uh, I Listen, I agree with, with Benny. I think that you've seen a lot of, of the youth coming into this party in a way that really, I think, was very unexpected for people. Look at Vivek. And, I mean, the energy this guy brings. I, I was on stage with him last night with my father-in-law. He's incredible. But whoever it is, I can guarantee you this, they will be an America first patriot. They will be somebody who, as Benny said, will carry the mantle of this movement because he changed, my father-in-law changed the entire face of politics in this country. He changed the Republican Party. It will have to be someone who is in line with him on that front. Um, and it's it's exciting stuff. We're breaking history. You We're mentioned, making history over here. All right, Laura, you mentioned change there. So I want to just ask you maybe a more difficult question. I've seen mm, glimpses okay. of your father-in-law when he made his victory speech in Iowa, not so much after New Hampshire, but in Iowa, of the kind of charm, um, civility, decency uh, that I saw a lot of when I did the Celebrity Apprentice over the boardroom table for week in, week out, um, which he's been reluctant to show, actually, when he's been a politician. Is he, a, is he capable at his age now? of actually pivoting to a slightly more, dare I say, if he was to be re-elected, a less bombastic, slightly more inclusive <laughs> president? Well, it is Donald Trump. Uh, so to make a prediction like that uh, would be, you know, he, he'll do what he thinks is best. And the interesting thing with him is, yeah, you probably saw two very different Donald Trumps in the Iowa uh, victory speech and in last night's New Hampshire victory speech. But he chooses his tone based on the moment. And I think his tone was very appropriate in Iowa. And quite frankly, last night, I feel like it was very appropriate as well. Right now, we have an election to win. We do not need to be fighting within the Republican Party for the obvious Republican nominee to actually take that title. We should galvanize our support together. We should go forward. We should make sure that we leave nothing to chance on November 5th because we have to take back the White House. Pierce, we have no other option in this country. And quite frankly, I don't think the rest of the world has another option but to have Donald Trump back in the White House. I think the rest of the world is in a mixture of shock and awe and horror and delight and curiosity <laughs> at the <laughs> impending return of Donald Trump, <laughs> the Teflon Don. Uh, we shall see. It's going to Here's... be a fascinating year. Lara, great to see you. Thank you so much. Send the family Here's all my really best. Here's really quickly. Benny, final word May to I you. May I ask you a question? Yes. May I ask you a question? Yeah. This is a question that the internet's been asking for a very long time, and we don't have an answer, and it must come from you, sir. Were you in a movie with Donald Trump <laughs> called Home Alone 2? <laughs> that is Were not you me. the pigeon lady? That Were is not me in Home Alone 2. Alone 2. I'm <laughs> grateful for the that chance to put McCall? the record straight. That helped Kevin. That's actually Did a female actress. It's not me. It looks you nothing look like it. Was. There's no shame in it, Pierce. <laughs> nice. No shame. I'm not it's the a pigeon lady in Home Alone 2. Although, it's I do go in Central Park a lot, and I can see the resemblance, but it's not me. Uh, but thank you, Benny. I appreciate it. You got your viral moment, you bleep. Uh, <laughs> uh, good to have you on the programme, too.